Welcome to 3 and Out on TV Piedmont Channel 60. I'm your host, Brian Carter, alongside Ryan Orlovsky. Get your popcorn ready because we're putting on a show. You're watching 3 and Out, Orlovsky. What's being discussed here this time? On the opening tip, we'll debate on Tony Dungy's retirement. We'll get to the emails on the seventh inning stretch. And on third down, we'll have our usual more or less segment. As always, if you have questions, comments, or topic suggestions, feel free to email us at 3 Sports at gmail.com. All emailers receive a free 3 and Out pen. That's right. Tony Dungy finally called it quits, and many knew it was coming. However, we're still shocked at his decision to hang it up. What's done is done, and now it's our job to debate on whether we think he should have retired or not. Let's start with Orlovsky. What do you think? I think Dungy should have stayed. You know, I mean, he's had a great, he's been a great coach in the NFL for a long time. He's overcome a bunch of obstacles to become the first African-American coach to ever win a Super Bowl. He went 85-27 and 27 in seven years with the Colts. But, you know, he's got one of the greatest quarterback-receiver combos of all time coming back. Who knows how much longer Harrison and Manny are going to be there together. So we need to take advantage of these guys and maybe come back, get the city of Indianapolis another Super Bowl. Because you know what? At age 53, he's still young, and the Colts are doing everything for this guy. You know, they're, they're chartering a private jet for him after all the games to get him home quicker to see his family. And he still has a two years remaining on his contract. So why would Dungy sign on for that extra three-year extension he did a couple years ago? You know, he's getting paid $5 million a year to do this. And, you know, he shouldn't have signed on if he knew he wasn't going to finish it out. Well, That's you know, you can't always it. predict how things are going to turn out, Orlovsky. I mean, too many people don't know when to retire. I mean, to me, it's actually a good thing to see a guy, you know, he, he's not actually quitting while he's on top. You know, he's not pulling one of those ordeals. But... You know, he, he knows he's not just going to stick around. He's done just about everything he can do. I'll get into that later. But, yeah, he's at the relatively young age of 53 for a head coach. But he's been debating on doing this since he was, you know, he has, yeah. before he had said he wanted to retire by the age of 50, yet he still went another few years. So he gave the Colts more than he really wanted to do. And, you know, he's prayed, prayed with it and, you know, prayed about it and talked to his family about it and decided that this, he felt like this was the right time. He felt like it was his time to leave the game and time for him to spend time with his family and his wife in Tampa, Florida. And the Colts wanted him back for an eighth season. Unfortunately, after the loss to the Chargers in the uh, AFC playoffs, you know, it, it was time for him to just uh, say he's out. And after the San Diego game, he said, I was so disappointed with the loss, I couldn't figure out why. Just really questioned it. This is a tough choice. It just may be time to have more balance in my life. So, I mean, who are we to question the guy when he says it's time for him to go? I think, yeah, if he thinks it's the right decision, then ultimately it's the right decision for him to retire. And I can agree with that, but it's just tough to see someone, t someone like Tony Dungy go at age 53 especially, and with everything that the Colts have done for him. Granted, he's given the Colts a lot. He's given the Buccaneers a lot. And a lot of people thought that he was going to quit a couple years ago after his son committed suicide. So you have to really, you know, just shake your head and say, you know, good for you for coming back for that. You know, that, that's a heck of a struggle to go through. And, and he persevered, you know, and he, and he came out on top and won a Super Bowl a couple, a year, two years later. So, um, I don't know. It's just really tough to see Dungy go, especially with time left on his contract. It is, but is this not, as a Steelers fan like you are, I mean, it was, it was pretty much the same kind of thing with Bill Coward leaving. I mean, you know, I yeah. don't know how much was left on his contract. I'm not really sure. but I think he definitely is, had more than two years left. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he was, you know, he was at a relatively young age. He still has enough time to, if he wants to go back into coaching now, he's already But at the same the time, you see Coward went out on top, and yes, I mean, Dungy, exactly. Dungy, I mean, he did say not everybody can go out on top, and this is his time. This is the time that he feels is right. But it just would be something nice to see. It would be nice to see him take advantage of Harrison and Manning one more time. Yeah, and we talked about this in the last, last show, though. Is what, I, what I like about the fact is that he, just, he didn't just take his time with it. The guy took one week after they lost in the AFC playoffs yeah. and made his decision. He didn't pull a Brett Favre. Yeah, take notes, Brett. Yeah, I mean, come on, Brett. Listen up, man. Don't watch the videotape. Watch this. I mean, the guy made his decision very quickly, and yeah, like like I said, this has been an annual debate the last three or four years. He's been wanting to, pro or been hinting at But it's at been the an annual debate for the past three or four years, That's but in saying. 2005, he signed a three-year extension to the original five-year deal that he signed in 2002. Maybe at that time he felt more motivated. But, but if but he's been debating it for the past three or three to four years, you know, he shouldn't have signed on for three more years. But you never know what's going on under the table, though, Orlovsky. Maybe the Colts said, hey, maybe even if you don't serve out the contract, it's okay. You might be able to get out of it sooner, but, you know, at least just to guarantee that if you're still coaching at that time, you'll still be under us. See what I'm saying? That way his career doesn't end yeah. as he's a free agent coach, so to speak. And it, it was just, you know, he just hoped that he could have spent 
waited another month to make the decision by taking that trip to the Super Bowl. But unfortunately, Colts didn't make it. And, you know, he, they lost, but it's no big deal. I think it was the right time. And then he had good reason for wanting to hang it up, spend time with his wife and family, check. You know, he's got a son, Eric, who plays high school football. He's a senior playing for a powerhouse high school. Why wouldn't you want to be there to see your son have a chance at a state championship? On top of that, go go with him to visit different but colleges. But he gets that charter jet, so I mean, he's home. He's home a lot more than people think that he's home. He's probably home a lot more than most NFL coaches are with their family, especially with his family living in Florida and him being all the way up in Indiana. You're right, but you know you can't you can't question the guy's morals here. I mean, he's he's done a lot of uh, one of the reasons he said he wanted to retire is that so he could devote more time to doing the Lord's mission work with outreach programs that helps troubled youth and convicted criminals. And then, as you mentioned earlier, he had a son named James and back in 05 mm -hmm. who, you know, committed suicide. And that was really a tough loss for him. It was in the thick of the season as well. And they still ended up making the playoffs that year. And, yeah, I thought something, you know, lost. He had something lost inside after that. But the guy's done it all. He's, he's definitely been content with his 13-year career. It's been a great, a great career for him. He's Tampa really Indiana. turned two franchises around. You exactly. know, he's made the Bucks and the Colts contenders pretty much every year. Yeah. He has, and, and that being said, what more is there to be done? You know, we can't be mm -hmm. like Michael Jordan and just decide to come yeah. back and play for the Wizards. I mean, he's done everything he can do. The guy had a 652 winning percentage, number six all time with coaches that had 100 or more wins. He had 148 wins, 79 losses. More wins than any coach in franchise history for the Colts. Yeah, and he was the first black coach to ever win a Super Bowl. Um, NFL record, six straight 12-win seasons. Um, and then 10 straight trips to the playoffs. That's also a record. And he's a sure shot Hall of Famer in Canton. So, I mean, to me, I felt that he made the right decision. I don't see how you could really see otherwise, especially when he's, he's the one who said it. And he also said, the last quote he had on this was, don't shed any tears for me. I've gotten to live a dream most people don't get to live. So he knows he's had a great taste, 13-year career. You know, there's nothing more. If, if he doesn't want to coach anymore, then I don't think he should be back. Well, Bill Cowher did it a couple years ago. I just hope this isn't a trend that's going to continue for NFL coaches to basically just entering their prime and just calling it a quiz. I, I, it's just something you don't like to see happen, but I it's mean, not. But it, it could be like Cowher. Let's just say this. You know, maybe give it three or four years, you might get that itch to coach again. Cowher's going to come know. back. You never it's know. Coming back. Game ball time. I'm going to give mine this time. Uh, I was going to give it to Tim Tebow, but uh, we've kind of already hit on that. But I'm, I'm pretty much just going to have it have to give it to Sam Bradford, who had a great shot at being the number one pick along with Matt Stafford. Instead, he decides to come back as a redshirt junior with Oklahoma. A big chance for them. They're bringing back a lot of players, a chance for them to maybe him win another Heisman and definitely a chance for them to win a cha uh, national championship. I'm going to need that ball back real quick. Because i got to give my game ball to Willie Parker, who didn't see this coming, the big Steelers fan that I am. Parker finally got things going last week with the ch against the Chargers. 147 yards rushing, two touchdowns, 5.4 yards on average a carry. So, Willie Parker, good to see you getting back on track. Yeah, Steelers may go all the way. It's time for us to shut up now and take a break. The seventh inning stretch is up next, so stick around. 